a second example of solutions in calorimetry. So in the first example, we did two solutions, an acid and a base. In this example, we're taking um, a something with water, okay? So um, in this example, it's going to be um, actually an acid with the water. Um, you could also have a solid plus a water, um, maybe like some powdered uh, metal that you're mixing with water or that you're going to mix with an acid. Um, I, the big, big principle that I want you to see here is that when you're making one new homogeneous substance, this new solution, you have to add the masses, okay? You have to add the masses. Um, so rather than having two large solutions, I wanted to show you um, a little bit of acid being mixed with water. What do we get? Okay, so here's our question. We have uh, sulfuric acid liquid um, and we have 5.2 grams of this, okay? Um, that's going to be pretty powerful stuff right there. Um, and we're going to mix it with 135 grams of water. Now the initial temperature, so these both would just be at room temperature, um, for each of these is 20.2 degrees C. And once we mix it, whoo, check that out. By only mixing five grams of that acid, it went up eight degrees, 28.8 degrees. Tells us to assume that the specific heat of the overall solution, very similar, similar to water, 4.2 joules divided by gram times degree C. And here's the question. What is the enthalpy for that sulfuric acid? So they want us not just to find heat, the Q, but to find the kilojoules per mole. And the mole that we're going to use is the sulfuric acid. Okay, so again, I'm thinking energy transfer. Where's energy coming from? Where's it going? So I have my water, I pour this sulfuric acid into it, the temperature goes up. Okay, I know there's a reaction. The um, sulfuric acid is actually um, ionizing, is um, going to become an aqueous solution where the hydrogen ion sulf sulfate ions are gonna be surrounded by water. So this is really an ionization reaction. Um, the solution got warmer. That means the solution is taking on absorbing energy. That's the endothermic part which means the reaction itself, the um, ionization of those atoms just um, coming apart, breaking apart, ionizing, and then being surrounded by water, going through the salvation process, that whole reaction is releasing energy. That's the exothermic part. So the reaction releases energy and the solution absorbs the energy. And how do I know that? The temperature of the solution went up. That was my clue. The temperature of the solution went up. Now, if the temperature had gone down, that means that the solution would have lost energy. It would have given away energy into the reaction. So then the solution would have been exothermic and the reaction absorbed the energy from the solution. That would be the, um, the endothermic part of it. For this, the reaction gives away its energy and the solution absorbs it. And again, how I know that is it got hotter. The solution went up in temperature, it absorbed energy. Just as a point of interest, if it was an endothermic reaction, like if I put an ammonium chloride into water, that temperature goes down. The reaction absorbed energy and the solution, it, the solution released its energy and that's why the temperature went down. So if you wanna make a note to yourself, if the temperature goes down, that means the reaction is endothermic and the solution is giving away its energy, it's exothermic. If the solution temperature goes up, that means the reaction is exothermic, giving away its energy and the solution is absorbing the energy and that's why the temperature goes up. Okay, ours is exothermic. So the solution absorbs the energy, the temperature has increased. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, break out our formula for the solution. So remember, I want delta H, which means I need energy. Q divided by moles is really what that is. I got to find Q. Don't break that apart. As a reminder, if you're finding energy, if you're finding Q, um, or and if they might say heat, or if you're finding enthalpy, delta H, don't break this apart. That's what you're looking for. Equals CM delta T. And again, why did I set these equal to each other? The amount of energy lost has to equal the amount of energy gained. 
conservation of energy, they have to equal each other. We can't lose or gain energy anywhere. Okay, or create, create energy anywhere, I should say. Let's go ahead and plug in negative Q of the reaction equals 4.2 joules by grams is degree C. Oh, now this is the part where you have to be careful. It is going to be 5.2 grams plus 135 grams of water. Now you guys, I think it was in 2014, there was an AP question and it was a solution really, really similar to this. You had one small substance that was being added and I think it was a salt, a salt that was being added to water. Um, this could be hearsay. Um, I heard this from um, somebody um, higher up in AP. She came to the University of Utah to speak. Um, she shared that out of the 160,000 students that took the test, less than 100 remembered to add the two substances in the solution. Less than 100. Uh, so very, very, very few students got that problem 100% correct. Um, so be careful. If you're making one new solution, you have to add the masses. I'm gonna write it again, add masses. And this is only when you're making one new solution. Okay, this new homogeneous solution. Now we're going to multiply this by change in temperature. Uh, change in temperature, final 28.8 degrees C minus 20.2 degrees C. Let's look at our uh, scientific notation really quick. 28.8 minus 20.2 is going to give us 8.6. I truncate at the smallest digit, uh, least digit. That is going to give me two sigs, sig figs when we truncate at the hundredths place. Um, if we add right here, also truncating is going to be at the tenths place. This gives me 140.2 grams. So I've got two sig figs, four sig figs, two sig figs. When we multiply, we'll end up with two sig figs. So negative Q of the reaction equals, when we multiply all of that, five, five, zero, six, four. 5,064 joules. So in this very, very particular situation, when I add 5.2 grams of sulfuric acid with 135 grams of water, it releases 5,064 joules. Well, they didn't ask me for heat. They didn't ask for magnitude of, of energy released. They asked for delta H. Remember, delta H is kilojoules per mole. Well, easy, I can convert that to kilojoules. There are a thousand joules in one kilojoule. I'm going to go ahead and bring the negative over as well. That will give us negative 50. And we had two sig figs. Um, actually, negative 50.64. We have to divide, so I'll, I'll carry it just another step further. So there's an, um, oh, I'm so sorry, I put the decimal in the wrong place. That's 5.064. So negative 5.064 kilojoules. Kilojoules because joules canceled. Now we have to find the moles. So kilojoule per mole. And they wanted it for sulfuric acid. So I'm going to take 5.2 grams sulfuric, oops, sulfuric acid. Um, we'll have grams of sulfuric acid on the bottom and one mole. I did the molar mass on this. So two hydrogens, one sulfur, four oxygens. The molar mass is 98.09 grams. So if we divide this, we are going to get 0 0.053 uh, moles, 0 0.053 moles of sulfuric acid. Okay, now we can finish it off. Delta H is going to be kilojoules, negative 5.0064 kilojoules, divided by moles, 0 0.053 moles of sulfuric acid. And that is going to give us 96 kilojoules per mole. So for every one mole of sulfuric acid that's put in the water, it's going to release, sorry, forgot to carry my negative right there. It's going to release 96 kilojoules. It's a ratio. There's your delta H, and this was your Q right there. Okay, very good. Add those masses when you have a solution. Thanks.